Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today comes from plant-based royalty and grew up plant-based in a unbelievable home of people that have been on this show many times. Actually, her doctor, her doctor, her dad, who is Dr. Joel Furman, has been on five times. Her sister, Talia, has been on twice and is coming back. And this is our first time meeting. Her name is Kara Furman, and she's going to be making some pumpkin pie bites and telling us her story. Please welcome Kara to the show. It's so nice to meet another gorgeous Furman daughter. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so excited to be on the show and just to tell my story and show you guys a really tasty recipe. I can't wait because I was just saying, and I mean this genuinely, all three of the daughters, are, you're all gorgeous. You don't look anything alike. So how did, how did, how did that happen? None of you look alike and you have three distinctly beautiful children that, I mean, I don't know, I don't know the boys, so I can't comment, but how, did, how you guys don't look anything alike. That is just weird. Boy, it looks exactly like my dad. So um, that's definitely a thing. I got my mom's side. Yeah, because you're, 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 the, you're the only one I think that's blonde. Yeah, I am. Yeah. And you're the only one I think that's going to medical school. <laughs> that's also true. Yeah. yeah, I'm in naturopathic medical school here in San Diego, and it's awesome. I absolutely love it. It's been so much fun. This past week, actually, I had my first shift on um, hydrotherapy, and we do constitutional hydrotherapy, which is an alternating um, hot and cold towels. It's a treatment. And my patient had like severe depression and said the hydrotherapy has completely changed her life. And it's really cool. So school has been very rewarding and really fun. Did you always want to be a doctor growing up? In no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually went to school for, I changed my major a hundred times, but I went to school for finance and uh, which really helped me create um, my business actually. So it's nice to have that background. And then when I was working in finance, I was extremely bored and just not stimulated enough. So I asked my dad and my mom for some extra work and I was scribing my dad's lectures. And when he would talk, I just, I was writing it down and so interested and just loved it. So I volunteered at the hospital to see if I liked the medical field. I mean, I grew up in it, but if I actually wanted to put myself in it. So I loved my time at the hospital, hated my time in finance, loved my time scribing my dad's lectures. So that's why I'm here. That is so cool. I, do, I, do you know what kind of doctor you're going to become? So I'm in, yeah, <laughs> I'm in naturopathic medical school. So we don't actually specialize. You can, if you want to like get deeper into certain things, but it's more treating the whole body. And it's similar to family, being a family physician. Do you think you'll work with your dad at all or go out on your own? Yeah, for sure. No, I love what my dad does and I want to do a lot of that. So I want to put more of um, a younger focus on what my dad does because I just, preventative medicine is key, right? Like that's how I grew up and that's how I hope to live the longest, happiest, most adventurous life. So I want to show kids that eating healthy can be really fun and it doesn't have to be something that you dread or sacrifice on taste. Because when I grew up in the nineties, I mean, we ordered soy cheese online on the internet. My friends used to make fun of me that my house smelled like broccoli. Like I want to show people that it doesn't have to be like that and just make it a little bit easier from the way that I grew up. And I learned so much about growing up as a kid like this. And I actually volunteer for a camp that um, where kids have like severe illnesses, they have cancer and the way that they eat at the camp just really hurts my heart. And I wanna be able to like bring it to a younger generation. Well, it must've been amazing growing up in the Furman home. I wonder like what was Halloween like oh. coming up soon? Yeah, right. Okay, so Halloween was, it changed a lot over the years. Um, in the beginning, my parents were a little less strict and we were allowed to have three pieces of candy, um, actually. And then we had to throw the rest out, but, or, and I actually, as we got older, my parents got stricter, they turned it to no candy, but they did something that was really cool for us is what they would do is give out glow in the dark bracelets and necklaces instead of candy. And so they kind of tried to make it more about the spirit of Halloween. You know, they would put so much emphasis on our costumes and the, you know, being with friends and people that it was more of um, an experience rather than focusing on the food. That's so cool. Well, did, did you have four kids in your family? Did any of you rebel at all? Cause I remember once interviewing one of the McDougal kids and one of the three actually did went to McDonald's and got sick. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, of course. I definitely had, I mean, I did competitive cheerleading growing up and I would be away for certain weekends where I would eat whatever I wanted with my friends. 
and then I would come home and not feel the best. But I definitely experimented with it. And I actually loved making really decadent desserts when I was younger. And my parents would be like, you're killing people if you're making these desserts. But I loved turning, you know, bright pink icing and into something really beautiful. And I used um, fondant to make Mater cakes from the movie Cars for my uh, little cousin who was obsessed with cars. You know, I was really into that. And then I got really bad acne in high school. And I decided that I was going to listen to my dad. He said, you know, I know you cheat sometimes. Obviously in the home, I was always eating nutritarian. But when I was out with friends, I did cheat. <laughs> and so he told me to follow his plan and my acne went completely away. And that's kind of where I dived in my own nutritarian journey and just got stricter and stricter with it. And then in college, I would like chase the salad spots and, you know, try to find the way to make healthy easy. Yeah. You know, I had a doctor on yesterday who, who works with adolescents and she said, you know, just telling, you know, a teenager they're going to live longer is not an impetus for them to eat healthy, but like with acne, that's a really good one. Yeah, for sure. I think, honestly, a lot of people don't really want to make the change until something poor happens. So, you know, whether it's acne or a more severe illness, it's hard to do that, like, and get the motivation. So I think it's really important to show people what happens to others, you know, like, you say, like, live longer, but maybe give a story about somebody that, or a lot of people, right? Like, give statistics, give facts. My dad always gave me the facts and always told me that he wanted me to eat this way because he loved me so much and wanted me to have, like, a very long and fun life. So I think it's really important to be, like, honest with the kids. Well, I believe it was you, because the name, Kara, I remember it, where your dad tells a story where you come home at, like, four years old saying, why don't the other parents love their children? Because they give them bad lunches? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he really did a great job of um, making it known that he wanted us to eat this way because it was going to be the best thing for us. And that, you know, he taught us why, rather than just being like, eat this because you have to. And, and you, when you grew up eating this way, it wasn't like the problem that some families have where kids grew up eating a lot of junk and then the parents tried to, to switch them. This was how you ate. Right. Like I wasn't introduced to candy until I learned from peers in school. So you I'm, must have liked it. You must have liked your food until you realized, oh, there's another world out there. People eat all kinds of things. It's crazy though, because now I think it's a little bit different because people are a little bit more open to eating healthy. But when I was younger, I mean, I had parents tell me that I was deprived and would give me, you know, candy when I would go to their house or like hot dogs, you know, like try this, try that. And I tasted it. And, you know, I didn't realize when I was younger, but then I would come home and get in trouble. My parents would be like, I know you ate something wrong, you know? And so I've definitely tried things, but it just doesn't feel good. Yeah, that's great. What, what were some of the favorite things you remember growing up that were, were made and served in your home? Ooh, I would say something that I always loved is sweet potato and soy cheese. It's what I ate the most probably growing up. And I also did broccoli and soy cheese. Um, those were like my two go-tos. I am a huge mashed potato girl, so I would like mash it up together, but nutritarian version of mashed potatoes. And then another thing that I always loved is toast, like Ezekiel bread with um, peanut butter or almond butter, cashew butter, um, banana, raisins, cinnamon, vanilla. That was one of my go-tos. And then all the fruits. Wow. Yeah, that's so cool. fruit. <laughs> that is really, really cool. Your dad has a very funny sense of humor. Like a lot of times when he's speaking, Does, did, is that what he's really like at home? Kind of, kind of corny a little bit. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> His jokes are great. The advice he gives me, especially about boys, just as corny as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, because he's funny. He he should he should do stand up. That's great. That just just must have been so fun. Were all the kids uh, like? Do, were some of you more what's the word rebellious than others when it came to going outside the eating? Yeah, I mean for sure. I think my brother was probably the least rebellious. Um, he would he didn't really love like fruit and that sort of stuff, but he stayed in the house a lot and found his way to eat like whole wheat, um, healthier pastas. And he ate a lot of um, like frozen blueberries. He was great. Um, he really just tried his best. I remember in high school, actually, he approached me and was like, I need to eat healthier lunches. Can you help me decide like what I could bring that 
you know, is easy to bring to school. So uh, that was cool. And yeah, I don't really, I think I was probably the most rebellious, honestly. <laughs> well, you know, it might, might be fun because like it, it, I can imagine if somebody tried to like uh, food bully you, you could say, look, I'm sorry, my dad's Dr. Joel Furman. I can't do this. You know, <laughs> you have a really good excuse. Yeah, no, people did it. I mean, it's so true. I, people, it was hard at times, you know, for me personally. Um, I think that's why I probably rebelled so much. But then as I've gotten older, I just, you know, I wish I didn't rebel. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's just, sounds like, is your mom a good cook? Mm, I wouldn't say a good cook. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she definitely made us things, but she, you know, um, she tries her best. I would say my dad's more of a cook. Oh, wow. did, did he make a lot of the meals? Um, sometimes. Yeah. We would, we would have meals like pre-made and put in the fridge so that we could eat whenever we wanted at our leisure, kind of just like make our own stuff too. You know what I was wondering, like some families I've seen like with children, like they'll have like a chart on the refrigerator that the kid did their chores. I'm wondering, like, did you have a chart for each kid? Like, did you get your G bombs today? Boom. <laughs> hey, that's a great <laughs> idea. And we didn't have that now, but we should. <laughs> that is so funny. What now naturopathic medical, school how many years is it so when are you actually a doctor or are you maybe you're a doctor now no I'm not yet I'm still in school so it's a four-year program four or five years actually um, depending on how you want to split it up so I actually just switched up to the five-year program because of the business so I sell like these overnight oats um, I have them here and it's one of the reasons that I chose the five-year program because I'll have more time to just like separate school and the business well, since you held up the oats, why not talk about your business, Doctors Daughters? So it's super fun. It's one of the things that I want to do is making healthy fun. And that's why it's cool colors and everything. So what I love so much is breakfast. I think it's like a great start to the day. And I had a, a huge pantry full of just, you know, all the nuts, seeds, oats, um, dried fruit, everything like that. And it takes time to like get it all out, put it in a bowl. I buy in bulk. Um, so I was like, I should make like what I make for at home. I should make for other people to make it easier. You know, people work and that sort of thing. So these are the overnight oats. There's a bunch of things in each bag. This one is matcha, which has um, mulberries, walnuts, flax seeds, uh, maca, lemon. And yeah, so they all have different ingredients and I have six flavors and this is what they look like. So you just put them in a jar or a bowl and then soak it overnight with um, your any plant-based milk and it's super easy. Well, that'd be great for travel. It's so good for travel. I bring it to the airport and then I'll go to a coffee shop and ask them for nut milk. And then I'll just put it in the cup that they give me. And it's so easy. That is so, how long have you had that business? I think it's been, I started at the farmer's markets um, in August of last year. So it's been a year and a few months. That is very cool. Sakura, who's watching live, wants to know if any of your friends or many of your friends are plant-based. And I would add growing up in New Jersey, what were there other people like you? Yeah. Um, so growing up, I wouldn't say any of my friends were plant-based. I can't actually think of one. Um, but <clears throat> they were very open to eating at my house, what I made. So I used to make my friends whole wheat pancakes when they would sleep over and they were fine with that. And we put like frozen cherries and frozen blueberries on top and they didn't ask me for other things. But I did have friends who would come over and be like, you don't have chips in your house. It's so annoying. <laughs> and, you know, they would get over it. I would give them something else. My high school boyfriend was really, really um, great with eating this way. He didn't eat this way um, before we met. But when he would come over, he ate my potato and cheese, my broccoli and cheese and actually loved it really enjoyed it. So I think my friends were very open-minded, even though they didn't eat this way, they were okay with me eating this way. And um, I guess di didn't have a problem with it when they were at my house, but that's most people. I have lost friendships over it as well. So I have had, a fr had friends who said that it made them uncomfortable that I ate too healthy. Um, and I think that all goes to personal, um, you know, like judgments about themselves. Right. Because if, if I make someone uncomfortable, it's not my fault. Like, I don't care what you're eating, so you shouldn't care what I'm eating. Um, so that's definitely been a little bit of a struggle. But with most people, it's great. And as I've gotten older and moved out to California, people are even more health focused. And I do have a lot of plant based friends now. 
I mean, that's crazy that somebody would not be friends with you because you ate too healthy. I think that that, that that that's that's strange in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting, but I think it's a reflection of them, you know. Yeah. Well, I don't think they're really friends then. It's sort of like I know people that have had to quit alcohol for medical reasons and they lose their friends because they're no fun because they don't drink. What was it like? Like how I'm pretty sure nobody in your family smokes or drinks, but like, did they have to tell you not to do that? Or like that was just understood that that's not a cool thing to do? Um, No, I think that it's just, you know, we know that it's so bad for you. And um, yeah, I think it's just understood. I never really... I mean, my dad definitely brings it up for sure. He talks about it. You know, we all went to college and had experiences with it being presented to us. And I think it's just kind of something that you had to make your own choice. Like my dad can only tell us so many times that alcohol kills brain cells, you know? Um, So it's, you can't force people to do anything, even as a parent. Right. Because I remember once a long time ago seeing Jack Lane's son on TV and he was quite out of shape. It was nothing like his parents. <laughs> yeah, right. You can't force anyone to do anything. So you just have to give them the facts and, you know, support to be how they want to be. Do you think you'll work at the retreat with your dad seeing patients or maybe do do something on your own for a little bit first? Yeah, I would love to work at the retreat. I definitely have <laughs> my own visions and want to do some things on my own. Um, but I the retreat is such a great opportunity and it's actually just so incredibly amazing to see the things that have happened here. You know, people have reversed their diabetes, no longer have kidney stones after having them for years and years. It's awesome to see. In your medical school, do they know who you are? Like, it was actually funny because I created an event to raise money um, my first year and it was a yoga event and we were going to have my dad speak at the event. So I was giving out flyers, like, to tell people to buy tickets and everything. And people were like, how do you get Joel Furman to come to the event? And that's when it was actually, it maybe it was like six months into school. And I was like, we have the same last name. Like he's my dad. <laughs> oh my God. That is hilarious. Yeah. I, I didn't realize, cause that's not a very common name. I don't, except for you guys in like the cop in the OJ case. I don't think I know anybody with that last name. I don't think I do either. Yeah, you're right. Not very common, but people didn't put it together until that event. <laughs> That's the thing. So what, what what was the best thing growing up Dr. Joel Furman's daughter, you think? The best thing. Um, so food aside, adventure. My dad is very adventurous and he put a sense of adventure into all of his children. Um, we've done crazy things together. And I'm like, we went whitewater rafting and these probably dangerous rapids, but we've done a lot of, you know, crazy things together, which has been really fun. Well, I know that in addition to being such a healthy eater, your dad's a maniac when it comes to fitness and being in shape. Did he pass that on to you? Is that genetic? Uh, Yeah, I would say the sense of adventure is just amazing. And yeah, we all love to, you know, we go for bike rides, we uh, go hiking together. It's really fun. That's cool. And nobody in your family really has any health or weight problems. No, yeah, I wouldn't say so. What about like cousins? Like, do you, I, I'm guessing that one or both of your parents have siblings and you probably have cousins. Are they, do they eat healthy too? Yeah, actually a lot of my cousin, my, a lot of my aunts and uncles work for Dr. Herman. So they um, hear it all the time and they have over time, my mom's family did not eat this way before meeting my dad. And they, over time working for the company have started eating this way, but I do have cousins that, you know, they love how I eat and they always ask questions about it, but are more conventional eaters. You know, I remember meeting, uh, I used to work uh, at, in the holiday season at the True North Health Center where they fast. And I remember, I can't remember the person, but I remember meeting somebody there that said that your dad a long, long time ago used to fast people in his house. Do you remember that? Like, did, like what was it like for you, like seeing patients? Yeah, of course I remember that. Um, it was interesting because I was a crazy child and it was fun. It was cool. It was fine. I mean, we used to run around his fasting house. It was fun. Did it, did the fasters ever try to sneak into your house to get food? No, not that I know of. I can't think about that. Yeah. I can't think of a time that that happened. Yeah. Do you have a cute dog like your sister? I do not have a cute dog like my sister. I do not even have time to take care of myself sometimes. I don't know how I would take care of a dog, but my parents have a dog and I love to hang out with the little pup. Well, wait, that's pretty new then, right? Because didn't they have a dog and then yeah. they gave PD to Talia? So and- now they have a dog, Rain. Um, she's a Boceron, um, kind of like a Doberman. And she is the best. So smart, so beautiful, really cute. That's neat. So she hangs out at the retreat. 
Yes, she does. Oh, that's so cool. Well, are, are you happy your family now lives in California versus New Jersey? Yeah, it's so nice. I actually moved here. I lived here for about a year and a half, two years without them when they were still living in Jersey. And then when they moved out here, it was just so nice because I can obviously see my family whenever I want and steal their food. Nice. That's great. Or eat at the retreat. Yeah, that too. <laughs> That is so neat. I think you have, do you, I think I looked up, you have like a book or an ebook. Yeah, it's actually a fall ebook. Um, so it's really pertinent to this time period. And it's really fall focused on my favorite recipes that I've made, I guess, two falls ago. Yeah. Do you, yeah. What do you make? Like, I mean, cause you must be very busy going to school. So obviously your oats you can have for breakfast, but then what do you do about your other meals? Yeah. So I try to eat a salad um, for lunch. And then for dinner, I love to just put any vegetables I have in my fridge. I actually use a lot of frozen vegetables because it's easier. They don't go bad as fast when you live alone. And I'll do that with uh, coconut milk, coconut aminos, and just make a little stir fry tofu. Really easy. I make spring rolls all the time. I use um, I use cilantro, min, um, I use shared taki noodles, which are really, really delicious. And then lettuce. And I'll put tofu, avocado in this roll and make my own peanut sauce. So that's one of my go-tos and um, I do quinoa bowls. And a lot of the times I actually will get food out too at healthier places. Like I know the healthier places around me when I'm really busy that I can just go to immediately and get something quick. And then I do smoothies. So I kind of just do it all, but I meal prep, which is really, really cool. That's really important. Yeah. So I always have like balsamic mushrooms in my fridge ready to go. Yeah. Well, if you like balsamic, you're going to get two free bottles for being on the show in a company that you might not be familiar with, California Balsamic. Tommy Balsamic is actually watching and you can make your balsamic mushrooms. They'll sound delicious. Oh, wow. I'm so excited. I use balsamic all the time. Well, this is fantastic because there might be some flavors you're not familiar with, like uh, like curry, for example. So this is exciting. Um, oh, yay. Thank you. Did your dad used to say to you guys growing up, the salad is the main dish? <laughs> We always know the salad is the main dish. I would say lettuce was always wrapped up in our fridge in a towel. It was washed, ready to go, easy for us to grab. But I didn't always love lettuce. So my sisters and I used to run around the house um, in a circle around the couch, chewing on lettuce because we had to eat that first. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. That I think I, I think that would be so be so fun to be a fly on the wall growing up in your house. <laughs> See. It was a fun time for sure. Yeah. What, what were holidays like? Did you do that? Because, you know, I, I, what I love about your dad so much, and which is why I always have him on my summits is, 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 you know, when he really understands food addiction and, and he, you know, he draws a hard line, which I believe is necessary. So I'm guessing holidays, like you didn't, they weren't that different than the other days. Yeah, no holidays were always so fun. Um, I would say like, most holidays we try to focus more on the games we play a lot of games on holidays but we we always make like healthy healthy things on thanksgiving we make um these like lentil cookies for dessert they're really good we have all the, the sides um we do sweet potatoes we do we do it all just nutritarian yeah. yeah what what games i love playing games too and even with the pandemic i was able to continue through you know they have all the games i played in person they have them online through jackbox and other companies what games do, do you guys play or did you like to play have you ever heard of spoons i haven't what is that that sounds fun it, it's so fun so you put so say you have four people playing you'll put three spoons in the middle so one person gets out at the end and you pass cards until you get four of a kind and the first person that gets four of a kind grabs a spoon and when you see someone grab a spoon the next person you like try to grab one and the last person doesn't have one is out and it gets very intense we have tournaments it's really fun oh my god that's i'd love to go to your house for Thanksgiving. that sounds so fun yeah we're big yeah, I, love, too. I love that do you have any equipment that I might be familiar with that I love, for example, the Instant Pot, the air fryer. Do you use any of those in your daily life? I don't use the Instant Pot or the air fryer, um, but I guess the most, the thing that I use the most is probably the dehydrator and a food processor. You, so what do you do in the, I like, I have a dehydrator. Do you have like the Excalibur? I have, it's like a Hamilton Beach dehydrator because I live in a tiny apartment. So it's just a little bit smaller and it works really well. I actually love it. Um, it's on Amazon, Hamilton beach. I think I have a link to it on my website. Um, but 
I make kale chips. I make a lot of fruit in the dehydrator. We make tofu. It's like jerky. So what we do is just cut up a, a piece of tofu and put tomato sauce on it and then dehydrate it. And it's delicious. That sounds great. Yeah. How, old, how old were you when you realized your dad was a big deal? Um, how old was I? To me, he's just my dad. Um, the reason I ask is, is uh, Dr. McDougall, like his grandchildren at a certain point, you know, when people, you know, now with you have a pandemic, but like they'd be out and about and like people would come up to them. And then at some point, like one of the grandkids said to Dr. McDougall, are you famous? You know, <laughs> like, like they didn't know, but, but I mean, like just one. Yeah. I mean, I've had instances, I guess, where I'm with my dad's at Whole Foods, with my dad at Whole Foods or something like that. And someone will come up to him, but I don't know if that I've ever had like a altering moment. That's funny. That's neat. Well, you're going to make a recipe for us today. I am. I'm very excited by it. It's super quick and easy. Um, so I'm going to move this back a little bit just so I can show you guys what I have here. Okay. So. Okay. That's a little better. This is a Hamilton Beach food processor, which is really great. Uh, it works so well. So what we're going to be making is pumpkin energy bites. And I'm actually gonna be using one of the overnight oats to do this because it has all the spices you need and everything ready to go. So it makes it super easy. So I'm gonna put one bag of the apple spice overnight oats into the food processor. And then I have dates here. So these are just medjool dates. I'm gonna use three of them and just take the pits out. I always love how your dad is like, well, you know, not too many dates. <laughs> I know. Well, so the cool thing about this is that um, there's a few dates in the overnight oats bag, but it's not much. And then I'm using three dates right now, but you can make about eight energy balls. So it's less than um, a date per serving, which is essentially what you want. And these are great too, because they're super quick to make and you can leave them in your freezer and eat them throughout the week. So I love having something sweet at night after I finish the day. So it's great. Who doesn't, right? Yeah, seriously. Okay. Um, just gonna get this almond butter. So you can use any nut butter, but I prefer almond in this recipe. So I'm gonna use a tablespoon of almond butter. And then I love using nut butters instead of oils. Um, cause as a nutritarian, we don't use any oils. So the nut butters are really great. So what I tend to use is nut butter or also try applesauce in sweet recipes is really good for, um, the oil free. And then this is pumpkin. I love the fall pumpkin. The flavoring is so good. Yeah, why do we only think to eat pumpkin in the fall? I know, right? I eat it all year. <laughs> this is not wanting to open. I, I hate when can openers do that. And they always do it when you're doing a demonstration or a class too, you know? Right? It's not my can opener, so I will say it's the first time using it, but it works. Okay. So now I'm going to put some pumpkin in. I just get the organic canned pumpkin and it works so well. Tastes really good. And then put it on. Did I mute so you don't hear the food processor? I think is going to mute you automatically. I really think it will. Okay, cool. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, just mix it around. You cook a lot? Okay, and then the next thing that I'm gonna do is add in um, chocolate chips, but I mix those in 
and they're optional, but I love the crunch in the recipe. Makes it really delicious. And the chocolate chips are monk fruit sweetened, dark chocolate chips from Lakanto. They're probably my favorite to use. I use dark um, so that they're like a little less sweet, but I like how they're monk fruit sweetened rather than other options. So these are them, really nice and big. Oh, nice. I haven't seen those. They're just regular store, Whole Foods online. Where did you get them? I get them in bulk online, um, but you can get them um, in most grocery stores, just in the baking section. Have you ever seen or used the ones like they have at Trader Joe's now that are literally just 100% cacao? Yes, and I love those. I like 100% cacao in recipes, but some people, I know it's a little too much. Right. And then I'm going to mix this. Yeah, I like the um, cacao nibs too. There's a question, can you use fresh pumpkin, but you'd, you'd have to cook it first, for sure. Yeah, you have to cook it first because it's pumpkin puree. Right. So if you did fresh pumpkin, you'd have to um, cook it and then put it in the food processor until you got your pumpkin puree. Yeah. But you can definitely do that. And he says, I think you need to have, to have a taste tester. Where shall I go? Well, she said she's in San Diego. It's about a two hour drive if you like. Yeah, right. Or you can make them your own, on your own because it's super That's easy. True. <laughs> okay. So then I have the dough here and I'm going to roll them. So I like to get about eight of them. And I just go like this, and then they look like this. They look and then I freeze them. Um, so you want to freeze them for about two hours before you eat one because it tastes so much better frozen. And then I just leave them frozen until I finish them, which is probably about eight days because I'll we'll have one a day. I think everything tastes better frozen. Right? Yep. Fro have you had frozen raspberries? Everything's so good frozen. Even when I was little and ate real candy, I always liked everything frozen. Yeah. Uh, Marcy says, is pumpkin puree the same thing as canned pumpkin? I, I think it is. I think so. I've never, I've actually never made my own pumpkin puree. So I can't say a hundred percent if it tastes the same, but I use canned pumpkin in lattes, smoothies, desserts. I actually, one of my favorite things to do, which is in my fall cookbook, um, is to mix peanut butter with pumpkin because it makes it a little less caloric and it's delicious. All right. So I want to make sure I have the link for your cookbook because I have the link for doctor's daughters. Okay. I will send it to you um, when my hands aren't so messy. <laughs> Great. And I can always add it. Now, you know, on the web, beautiful website, doctor's daughters, there's four gorgeous women and I recognize Jenna, but who are the other two girls? Oh, so, um, I'm trying to think of which picture is on the website. You're so going my, like this. You're holding something and going like this, four of you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So my, um, I think one of the girls must be our business partner. Um, she goes to school with me. And actually what happened was, is she and I started working out together because she's really into working out and she became my personal trainer. And we became like best friends after that. We would work out at school, after school. And I told her how I wanted to do the farmer's market business. And she said, that's so cool. I would love to do it with you. So she became, you know, my right hand girl. And she was in San Diego at the time when my sister was doing more of the online stuff. So she really helped me out with the farmer's markets and we have so much fun together. Her name's Priscilla. She's Brazilian. And we just are one day going to bring this also to Brazil where she's from, because, you know, it's not as readily available for healthy eating there. And then the other girl is um, one of, someone I grew up with is from my childhood and also lives in San Diego. And she would work at the farmer's markets for us. Oh, nice. Um, Marcy says, is this recipe in your cookbook? No, this recipe is not in my cookbook, but I think you have it to share. Yeah, yeah I posted it. It's in the show notes. So if you're watching on, on YouTube, it's right there. I see it right plain as day. And also put Doctor's Daughter website and Instagram. But if you want a direct link to the cookbook, please let me know. We can always add that. Yes, I will definitely send that to you. That, the cookbook is on drferman.com. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that go there. So yeah. I'm actually getting more than eight out of this recipe now. That's good. More is better. Yeah. In, in naturopathic school, do they 
have any part of the curriculum on nutrition in general or plant-based diets specifically? So we do have nutrition courses. Um, they're not plant-based. It's more um, Mediterranean style is what we learn. Um, and then I'm this quarter taking an elective on intuitive eating, which I am so excited by. Um, I'm really excited to learn more about that and, you know, see just why people fail on certain diets and how to prevent that. Yeah. That, that does sound I practice it more myself too. You know, I think you can always work on it. But your dad's real strong about oil. Can he come in and give him a lecture about why oil's not so, so good? I actually at my school had a little bit of an, like, I wanted, you know, people to hear more about plant-based eating because we weren't learning that much about it. So I, my dad came in and guest lectured. Oh my God. That's amazing. Yeah, it was great. Okay. And this recipe is complete. That was not hard. Very easy. And then you just put it in the freezer. And right. I have... At 10. And that's even better. So now you can have more than one. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So easy. I love just any recipe that can go in the freezer because of how busy I am. And I don't want to worry about things going bad. Yeah, that's great. Well, this is great. Well, thank you. It's so neat. Well, we just have uh, one more, one more daughter to get on the show. And I don't know, does you, what does your brother do? He's in college and he wants to be an engineer. Oh, interesting. He, he probably doesn't want to come on the show. I bet. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he would. <laughs> what would he talk about? Does he, does he cook at all? Yeah. I mean, he definitely does. He likes, I mean, I actually brought him one of my favorite meals to his school, um, that he really liked. And he was like, can you do this every week? Which was the share talking, um, tofu noodles and, um, tomato sauce with all, all sorts of vegetables, mushroom, broccoli, spinach. He loved it. Such an easy recipe. Um, yeah. So Nice, neat. Well, gosh, this was great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's delightful to meet you. So, oh, got, thank you so much for having me. It was so fun. My pleasure. If you want to, if you have any other books or recipes, you want to come on. I, uh, any, anybody with the last name Furman, well, except for maybe Mark Furman from the OJ Simpson case, <laughs> has an open invitation to come on the show. Oh, thank you. It's so you're, fun. You're so well. And where do you like to send people? I mean, do you do you have a Instagram or Facebook? Yeah, presence? my Instagram is Doctors Daughters. Um, I post a lot of like what I eat throughout the day on there. I post a lot about the oats, um, different recipes, and that's probably the best way to contact me if you have any questions. I look at all my messages and I'm pretty good at answering people. And then the website, doc, docsdaughters.com, um, you can find more information there. And we all sell our oats on drfervin.com. So either one. Right. So let me ask you one more kind of fun question. What, like the greatest takeaway from what you learned from growing up in the Furman home, like what, like what's the, like if you had to distill it into one or two sentences. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think something that I've just learned growing up in my house is perseverance and to hard work and to never give up, you know, cause even with the way we eat, like you can't give up on it. Like I've had moments where it's been hard for me, where I've been at parties and, you know, I've had things that I shouldn't have had. And, you know, I can't get so down on myself for doing that and like being a human being, but only work forward from it. And, you know, never stop learning is truly what it is. You can always improve, never stop learning. Yeah. Great. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Carrie. You're lovely. And I, I can't wait to learn more about your work. Thank you. My pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at the special time at 9 a.m. when my guest is Dr. John McDougall, who will be doing a rebuttal about the potato to Dr. Regger's webinar. So are you able to eat potatoes? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can eat potatoes. That's great. I don't eat, I don't eat potatoes that much, um, but I do sometimes. Okay. Well, they're not a forbidden food. Yeah, no. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks. Take care, Kara. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.